Okay, it's day 39 of this sweet potato germination experiment. So as you can see, the plant's grown very tall. In just a few days, it's grown several more centimeters. And the leaves are bigger. There are a lot more of them. So I'd first like to say that I've been having a horrible fungus snap problem in my apartment. And I just tried solving this by spraying some of my old seven-year-old bear advanced insecticide that kills uh, gnats among many other kinds of insects in the plant spa hole for the tr for the water tray and then I added some more water so maybe about 10 sprays and I filled it up with water by adding insecticide into these trays and adding water I hope the insecticide will percolate into the soil and kill all the fungus gnat larvae and it seems to have chased out all of the adults, you know, when I was spraying. Uh, several fungus gnats emerged from these water tray holes and were just buzzing around like crazy with, um, you know, very rapid flight patterns. So I think they're on the run. And hopefully within a few days this fungus gnat problem will be gone once and for all. The plant itself is multi-trunked. So what's going on is there's a much larger more well-developed branch like this one and then there's another one right here so it looks like it, they're kinda diverging from each other just a little bit to the sides and I hope these stems are woody and robust enough to um, withstand their own weight so they don't just like fall over or break likewise there's a third trunk um, right here and I'm sure there's more on the way so that's the way these things are developing um, this is the most robust one and it's getting really tall it's um, taller than where I usually position my LED lamp and you know at each one of these intervals is a meristem so there are meristems between the junction of each petiole which is this little stem like structure that supports the leaf and uh, the main stem itself you can see a springtail that's gotten its way all to the top and uh, now that it's summited I think it's just gonna go down oh there's another one so yeah um, I'm not too worried about springtails actually um, they don't really do anything to me or the plant but um, I guess if there are way too many that would be a problem too but for now, I'm just mostly concerned with fungus gnats, so there's a meristem in the junction of each one of these, uh, you know, petiole main stem intersections, and in my honeydew germination experiment lately, I learned that um, these are basically backup meristems that will activate if the shoot apical meristem gets cut off or damaged, so if a herbivore in the wild were to eat this uh, shoot then basically this one would be second in line to be activated basically there's a plant hormone produced at the shoot apical meristem auxin which travels in a concentration gradient downwards and it suppresses the development of this meristem, this meristem and so forth all the way to the very bottom of the plant but if the top gets lopped off then there's going to be some kind of reestablishment of apical dominance and uh, usually the one probably towards the top where the auxin is highest will probably start developing into the new dominant shoot apical meristem so if you keep trimming this thing or pruning it then it will sort of turn into like a bonsai tree where it's uh, short and squat and the new structures will be kind of small in comparison to the original size. So as I talked about, some leaves are just malformed for no apparent reason. But in other cases, you know, at first I thought this was just sand or um, you know, some kind of salt. But uh, apparently I must have done something to this leaf. Maybe if I tried to clean it too hard or something like that, then that caused some kind of crystalline powdery substance to be emitted from all the veins mostly and I've tried brushing this stuff away and I can't get rid of it I tried spraying some water on it but I'm not sure if it would just get secreted again 
In any case, this isn't sand. I mean, there's no reason sand should stick like this onto a leaf. And this is only in the middle. Um, if I take another leaf, you know, it's just a beautiful leaf. Uh, it doesn't have any of that. You know, that looks pretty good too. So here's one of these uh, malformed leaves. But, you know, overall this is a very healthy plant. Here's another malformation. So even in the wild, when I look at, like, say, a leafy weed that sort of resembles this, I'll see uh, deformed parts like that. So it's not necessarily something that's been eaten by insects. I think I may have caused some damage or, you know, maybe it was already damaged um, due to the transplanting process uh, or, you know, just me trying to clean the sand off or whatnot. So. So one question in my mind is, by doing this transplant, did I somehow knock this plant off its uh, vertical axis, and am I going to cause it to fall over and break? You know, I'd like to think that these stems are very robust. Um, they're not woody yet, but I hope they will become very stiff and hard, because if not, then we have a real problem with this thing just skyrocketing upwards. It's sort of going to fall over under its own weight. And, you know, I've heard some people refer to sweet potato as a vine, but um, this definitely doesn't grow like a vine. Like, it's not like honeydew, at least, where after 10 centimeters, it's just ready to fall down. Okay, it's day 41 of this potato germination experiment. So the sweet potato vines have grown very long, and they're actually vines. Um, the way I found this out was this... Uh, vine over here was starting to fall over. It's being propped up right now by the solar reflectors that I have set up, but it's just too big and uh, too fast growing. It's quickly becoming unmanageable. So I'm going to move this plant to my balcony along with the honeydew, which is also a vine. So this kind of vine is the kind that has a very thick stalk. You know, it's sort of like the buffalo gourd uh, wild vines that I videotaped a while back. Whereas honeydew is a more delicate vine, a lot more fragile, it has a lot more tendrils. Um, I don't think this has any tendrils, it's just like buffalo gourd, it's a thick vine, very robust and fast growing with big leaves and it kind of spreads all over the ground. So on the balcony it's going to have a lot more space to develop, so this might be my very last update indoors. After I applied that bare advanced insecticide, which kills uh, flies, gnats, and many other insects to the water tray. It basically drove away all the fungus gnat adults, I think, and soaked into the soil and probably killed all of the larvae. So within 24 hours, I immediately stopped seeing all fungus gnats. There was a complete cessation. I don't see any buzzing around these pots. I don't see any in the bathroom and any in the kitchen. You know, they're not bothering me wherever I go. And the only reason they were bothering me wherever I went was just because there were so many of them. I mean, they were just fanning out, looking for new things to infest. So that problem disappeared in a hurry, which means that that bare advanced insecticide is good for, you know, all those years. The insecticide is pretty potent, so it has a really long half-life and decays at a very slow rate. So one final note on the sweet potato for today is that these new leaves that came out and were buried in soil are dying. So that seems to be how this works. If you bury um, much of the stem underground then I think uh, the shoe system just kind of gives up there or that's the impression I'm getting. I don't think there's anything wrong with the plant and nothing's going to happen to the other leaves. One thing that piques my curiosity are these so-called whiteheads. So there seem to be quite a few of them along the stems and you know I haven't tried popping them but I don't really know what's going on with these and why they're there. So if you look at the stem there are some crystalline sort of salt so to speak. I don't really know what those are. And if you look at this leaf for instance you'll see some of that too. 
basically seems like someone sprinkled salt or sugar on top of these leaves and if you try to brush it it really won't go away so I don't really know what that's all about it doesn't happen on all the leaves and there we have a springtail okay it's day 45 of this sweet potato germination experiment so I move this onto my balcony and there's plenty of room now for development I have this long vine that would have fallen over just propping itself up against the corner and the leaves have gotten pretty big and here you can see two other vines developing as well so by that I mean one here and one here and I'm sure there's others as well that we're not uh, able to see at this angle so the foliage looks extremely healthy these are beautiful very large you know heart-shaped leaves and there's still plenty of water inside that tray. I've been, you know, topping it off every few days. It's going to get harder and harder to film this, but essentially this is the base at which all the shoot systems pop out of the soil. Um, you have some new leaves growing right there, but, um, you know, I remember there were some old leaves and they're just kind of shriveled and at the bottom. If you look at the center of the screen, there's just two dead leaves. So overall development has been fantastic and you can see how healthy these plants look. I'm not sure if they're separate or do all three vines belong to the same plant. Okay, so I know a lot of these leaves are very large now, but I'm going to try to measure some of the bigger ones. Say that's four and a half inches uh, long and about four inches across this leaf is about four inches across and five inches long it's kind of difficult to estimate how long this main vine is um, it could be over a meter long so there's been a lot of growth and everything just looks really healthy now. I'm not entirely sure that I need these solar reflectors, but they're certainly helping in my opinion by increasing the effective length of day and um, getting light reflected onto these leaf tops from different angles.